Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for each and every one of you for being here today with us. Um, we have all gathered here to listen to a special talk by Professor Lakshman Visanayaka, uh, who has been instrumental to this organization's journey. And he was ranked among the world's top 2% of the research scientists. He served the University of Peradeniya as the head and senior professor at the Department of Physics, and also as the director of Postgraduate Institute of Science prior to joining the NIFS. As an outstanding speaker and being invited to many forums, I would like to call Professor Lakshman Disanayake to deliver his talk on the topic, Sri Lanka, a renewable energy island. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Thank you, Janya. Good morning to everybody. Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, I uh, made this uh, presentation, um, I think about two months back in California University uh, as uh, Professor Charles Dahanayaka Memorial Oration. Um, after that, uh, there were a few requests from here in IFS. Uh, can I repeat it here? So it's not actually 100% repetition. I have. Uh, updated uh, some information so let's go through this journey quickly sri lanka um, is not yet a renewable energy island um, we are just at the beginning and there's a huge potential for sri lanka to be a renewable energy island <clears throat> let's see what we mean by a renewable energy island <clears throat> Okay, this is our planet Earth, the only planet in our solar system and the only place in our universe, as far as we know, which has life on it. No other planet or no other place in the universe, to our knowledge, has life. Not only we have life, we have intelligent life who can comprehend the environment uh, around us, galaxies and the universe. So that's another greatest gift the human humanity has uh, achieved. And Earth has a abundance of water. 70% of the Earth's cover is water. So we are blessed with that. As we know, we are also full of sunshine. So we have water and sunshine in abundance. So why not make use of this for our uh, power consumption? <clears throat> now, if you take the global picture all over the world, if you take the general uh, scenario, mm, whole world is producing electricity and also other uh, fuels, uh, mainly by burning petroleum coal and also from nuclear and from renewables such as hydro, solar, wind and biofuel. Especially as a result of burning this petroleum and coal which has taken millions of years to form, people are burning it within 200 years or so. They have taken millions of years to form. We are burning them for our convenience. Uh, during the last 150 years or so. Okay, as a result of burning fossil fuels, mainly coal, petroleum, diesel, or whatever, <clears throat> we are producing energy. I mean, the, the global picture. So 65% of the global electricity is from burning fossil fuels. Also, we burn fossil fuels for transport globally. 
we also contribute to that in both these processes we emit huge amount of we call uh, greenhouse gases namely uh, carbon dioxide methane <clears throat> so if you take carbon dioxide burning carbon uh, fossil fuels we add carbon dioxide to the environment which makes our uh, atmosphere hot uh, <clears throat> this is called greenhouse effect as a result of uh, this gas emission carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and hfcs hydrofluorocarbons because these gases enter the atmosphere and trap part of the heat waves so the environment keeps on getting warmer and warmer this specially visible you know there are um, a lot of data scientific data to support this uh, compared to pre-industrial era now, say, uh, 1,700 or, uh, 7, or so, something, uh, 19, uh, 1,700, uh, uh, carbon dioxide levels have started to increase, as you can see in this uh, picture. And as a result, the global temperature has increased by 1.5 degrees centigrade compared to the pre-industrial uh, era. <clears throat> as a result of these uh, gas emissions uh, also combined with this uh, there's a increase in the mean sea level mean sea, sea level rises at a rate that rate increases with time 1.7 millimeters per year <clears throat> so sea level rise Now, as a result of sea level rise, some of the countries, nations, is expected to go under water. Our neighbor, Maldives, Tuvalu Island, Marshall Islands, Noaru in Africa, Kiribati, and one centimeter rise in the mean sea level, uh, sea level will uh, result approximately one meter horizontally, uh, the water coming into the uh, land one centimeter will give one meter rise in the uh, sea level uh, horizontally so who are the biggest contributors to global warming the united states lead 6.4 billion metric tons of greenhouse gases per year china 27 percent uh, i don't know the actual uh, amount india so these are the three major uh, industrialized and industrial uh, developing uh, fast developing nations which pollute the atmosphere um, at, at, at present of course all the other countries contribute so greenhouse gases <clears throat> are likely to double within the next 150 years due to fossil fuel burning plus deforestation we are cutting down the carbon sinks uh, as a result of again carbon dioxide level increases which has, will result which has resulted landslides increased rain intense rain flooding heat waves communities will be affected due to flooding and all that we can experience we know by recent uh, uh situations so this global warming due to these greenhouse gases will have a uh, huge uh, drastic effects on human lives and agriculture sorry agriculture will be affected as the temperature rises so <clears throat> as a result of human made activities these things are happening so there is an alternative solution can people make a transition to renewable energy to generate electricity and other mm, needs without burning fossil fuels yes there's option nature has provided us why not use hydroelectricity solar 
wind, biofuels, geothermal. These are all renewable energy sources uh, which we can use efficiently for uh, uh, electricity generation and also for uh, transport. Mm. I have a short video of two, three minutes about uh, renewable energy. Around the world, renewable energy use is on the rise. And these alternative energy sources could hold the key to combating climate change. What is renewable energy? Renewable energy is generated from sources that naturally replenish themselves and never run out. The most common sources are solar, wind, hydro, geothermal, and biomass. Over 80% of the total energy consumed by humans is derived from fossil fuels. However, renewables are the fastest growing source of energy in the world. Renewable energy has many benefits. First, it can combat climate change because it creates no direct greenhouse gas emissions. The only emissions that they produce are indirect, meaning those that result from manufacturing parts, installation, operation, and maintenance. But even those are minimal. Second, renewable energy can decrease pollution and therefore reduce threats to our health. Wind, solar, and hydroelectric systems create no air pollution emissions, and geothermal and biomass energy systems emissions are much lower than non-renewable energy sources. Third, renewable energy is a reliable source of power. Because renewable energy sources are, well, renewable, they will never run out. Once built, renewable facilities cost very little to operate and the fuel is often free. As a result, renewable energy prices tend to be stable over time. While renewable energy has many advantages, it is not without downsides. It is difficult for renewable energy sources to generate power on the same large scale as fossil fuels. Building wind farms and dams can disrupt wildlife and migration patterns and lead to ecological destruction. Both solar and wind energy are intermittent. They only generate power while the sun is shining or while the wind is blowing. Batteries can store excess energy for later use. However, they are often costly. While renewable energy presents some challenges, it also offers an environmentally friendly alternative to the greenhouse gas emissions and pollution of fossil fuels. And as advances in technology make renewable energy more accessible, affordable, and efficient, an end to climate change could be within our reach. Sorry about that. <clears throat> right. Uh, <clears throat> so now you know what are renewable energies. Uh, the world needs to reach net zero emissions by 2050. Net zero means no carbon dioxide anymore by 2050. Now we are 2023. If we want to save our planet from climate change that I described earlier. <clears throat> So this is a huge solar farm somewhere. Consists of thousands of solar panels. Right. So now we have some background. What are renewable energies? Uh, greenhouse gases, global warming as a result of fossil fuel uh, burning. Uh, <clears throat> the United Nations community has every year global leaders, uh, le leaders of the world meet and decide take some make some recommendations global treaties uh, so one of the recent ones is uh, 2021 it's called cop 26 committee of of 
parties, this is a United Nations uh, wording. COP26 was held in 2021 in Glasgow. Uh, these are called climate uh, uh, change conferences. And important decisions were taken at the Glasgow conference. And Sri Lanka was represented by then President uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha. So he declared, along with other leaders, Sri Lanka is proud, proud to co-lead no new coal power plants, OK? And also to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. Fossil fuel burning, including coal and petroleum, will be phased out. Uh, phased out. So these are global commitment. They have signed treaties by 2050, zero carbon uh, electricity. So we have pledged internationally. Uh, actually, this Glasgow conference was uh, organized and led by uh, Boris Johnson, then UK Prime Minister, and uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India. So their final goal, maybe not 2050, uh, probably 10, 50, 20 years later, to, to, to target uh, a Green Grid Initiative, that project is named Green Grid Initiative, One Sun, One World, One Grid. One Sun, One Sun reflects the renewable energies. One world is the whole world, one grid, is one grid, like the internet, one grid for the whole world. This far away, maybe 2070 or so, but uh, it's in the mm, on the cards. Right, one sun, one world, one grid. Mm. Now, global uh, situation regarding renewables, solar photovoltaic, that's from solar panels, 500 gigawatts in 2020, it's still not enough. That is only 3% of world electricity uh, mm. demand. 500 gigawatts solar can give only 3% of world's electricity demand. Then uh, COP27, <coughs> that is last year, 20 November 2022, held in Egypt, uh, where again, these global leaders committed um, to, to, to limit global temperatures. Now it's 105 degrees up compared to the pre-industrial level, to, to, to limit it at that level. So no more fossil fuel burning. So they have pledged again. Mm, this is the UN uh, Secretary General, <laughs> Antonio Guterres. He says at that conference last year, we need a renewable revolution, not a self-destructive fossil fuel resurgence. Because fossil fuel people, petroleum companies especially, uh, try to block these initiatives because of their business interests. So uh, UN Secretary General says, if we are to avert climate catastrophe, renewables are the only credible path for the whole world. Okay, <clears throat> uh, how easy or difficult to transform from the fossil fuel burning to a renewable energy economy? renewable energy power generation. Uh, <clears throat> now, if you take the global picture at present, uh, electricity from renewable energy sources could provide 65% uh, uh, by 2030, if we follow these uh, targets, and decarbonize the whole world, 90% by 2050. So we have to use a mix of renewable energy sources. Hydro is a renewable energy source, wind, solar, biofuel, and geothermal. This for the whole world, depending on their um, availability. People can start using this. Hydroelectric power, you know, um, we have a, a reservoir and a dam and a turbine, hydroelectricity. Sri Lanka used to have 50%, now maybe 30%, but eventually it will come down to 10% or so from the uh, out of the total uh, power requirements. Solar thermal is uh, also possible. Solar heating, you can see it's solar, solar heaters on rooftops. Uh, that is one way of uh, 
you, you can also use them to convert into uh, electricity, solar thermal electricity. But uh, what is more popular is uh, solar panels <coughs> using uh, semiconductor mm, junctions. So these are rooftop solar heater, we call it, for hot water. And also solar tower where uh, thousands of mirrors focus sunlight into a, a water a tank and the water gets uh, converted into a steam and the steam generates a turbine and produces electricity. So there's a water tower, is hot water. So both are solar thermal route and this the semiconductor N type, P type silicon will form a solar cell, solar panel and generate electricity. Then the wind energy, simple wind turbines. Uh, there are several advantages of wind, uh, uh, wind power, clean, and it's a renewable energy source, uh, expensive to install, but uh, can last many years. Uh, geothermal, <coughs> if there are many countries, uh, those are resources used. Sri Lanka has uh, potential of uh, geothermal energy to develop in the future. Mm, this is Sri Lankan, I think Professor Deepal Subhasinghe work on these uh, projects, trying to tap some of the geothermal energy in Sri Lanka. Mm. Right, then we have <coughs> biodiesel, biofuels, biodiesel and uh, ethanol, which is from uh, plant material or waste food. One can generate these fuels. And in some countries, this biodiesel is used to drive uh, heavy trucks, buses. Uh, so that is another renewable energy source. Uh, we have seen this, uh, right. So now let's focus on the Sri Lanka power sector. What are we planning to do in the next 20, 30 years? Target, 70% of electricity generated by renewables. Can we do that? 70% by 2030, very soon. Uh, we are now 2023. 20, 100% mm, electricity by renewables by 2050. So our leaders have signed these uh, international treaties. Then, uh, uh, so in order to achieve these targets, there was the Asian Development Bank and UNDP initiative is a study uh, done several years ago uh, ended in 2017 how sri lanka used renewable energy to achieve this 2050 100% targets mm, so this uh, adb and undp report make some recommendations uh, is official available uh, and also these things are in the uh, vistas of prosperity, uh, what do you call it? Saubagye uh, Dekma, uh, election manifesto of uh, President Gautabi Rajapaksha. Mm, so these things have gone into the uh, generation plan of Ceylon Electricity Board. Okay, this is a just quick example. Uh, in Germany, it's a very success story. In one, on one fine day in Germany, 30% of all the electricity was given by solar panels. Right, this is one of our Hambantota solar park, 500 kilowatt small um, solar farm. Now we have bigger ones. These are rooftop solar and also solar farms in other countries, Sri Lanka also. Right, so Sri Lanka government has decided to go for these renewables, 70% uh, uh, by 2030, 100% by 2050. So there are various schemes. Mm, these are our power requirements. I will not go into detail. Uh, <clears throat> so we are going to use, increase hydro, solar, wind, and biomass. Mm. <clears throat> So we are going to gradually increase the new renewable energy um, component because our energy requirement is now is uh, 16,000 gigawatt hours. Um, at present, 64% of this is produced by burning fossil fuels at, at present. Um, 
Okay, now there are two plans, government plan based on the pledges given to the international community and uh, whatever the policy decisions. Mm, we are for 2030, uh, 70% and 2050, 100%. But, but CEB, Ceylon Electricity Board, is very reluctant to, to, because they have their own problems. So, uh, they have several major issues to be sorted out um, because uh, solar is available only during the daytime and is intermittent. When a cloud comes, it drops. Wind, also when the wind is there, power is there, not otherwise. So, CEB engineers have a problem to, to balance the grid. Once the grid is fed, uh, large fluctuations it cannot handle. Uh, so you have to have smart grids, which are very expensive, or mm, electricity storage facilities, again expensive. And they are transformers, have limited capacities to, to uh, include new uh, solar power, etc. So the CEV plan does not quite go along with the national, uh, nationally mm, agreed upon or required uh, <coughs> targets. So this is a situation, gigawatt hours energy in the vertical axis, horizontally, wind, solar, uh, biomass, hydro. So you can see 2020, very little solar is there. Mm. And biomass, everything is. Uh, hydro, hydro is one of the largest uh, renewable energy sources we have in Sri Lanka. We are fortunate to have that. This is a situation by 2050, okay. 2016 to 2050, you can see by 2045, we are phasing out coal completely mm. and depend on hydro, wind, and solar. Yellow is solar, uh, that green is uh, wind, and blue is hydro. Then you can see hydro has become probably 10% or so. Major hydro, we call. <coughs> Right, so again, gigawatt hours energy 2016 to 2050. This is the energy demand by the Sri Lankan society. Demand increases. Now we are 16,000 odd gigawatt hours. By 2050, it's close to um, 70,000 or so. Huge demand. So can we meet this with renewables? So CV generation plans have scenario one, two, and three, depending on um, the resources they have and the issues they have to face. So I have different, different uh, three scenarios. If we have this, we can do this. If I have this, you can do this like that. Uh, so again, again, renewables is coming in a big way to feed our national grid in the years to come. Um, because otherwise, uh, there are a lot of issues internationally. There will be a lot of pressure. So coal has to be phased out. Coal is a cheap power source. Right, so there is a situation in Sri Lanka. Mm. Uh, we also have recently, last year, um, commissioned 100 megawatt wind farm in uh, Mena. It's done, done by the uh, Ceylon Electricity Board with ADB assistance. So these are uh, mini hydro, wind, biomass, and solar. Mm, how they will be developed in the years to come. Uh, now, this uh, development up to 2020, sorry. Uh, you can see solar is coming in a big way, the yellow trace, and also the wind. So this is the situation beyond 2020 to 2040. Yellow is again solar, is coming in a big way. Wind is coming in a big way. Hydro is already there. So no coal, uh, phasing out coal gradually. Okay, same situation. Uh, yeah, now, as I mentioned earlier, we have a problem of storing solar energy and wind energy. One possibility is uh, storage batteries. Now you can buy batteries, container size battery, 100 megawatt you can store. That is equivalent to a small power plant. Mm, quite expensive. And pump storage is another method. Near Victoria Reservoir, you can have a lower reservoir and you pump the water. 
when you have enough sunlight and use it in the night. So this is called pump storage. It's a natural battery. So these, we have to develop these things. Uh, I think uh, CEB has already uh, taken some initiatives. Then wind resources uh, we are developing. Mm. Because Sri Lanka has huge solar and wind potentials. We can be more than self-sufficient in renewable energies. And some experts predict Sri Lanka can become an energy exporter if we properly invest in these uh, uh, lines. <clears throat> so this is a Thambapanni wind farm in Mana, commissioned last year, 100 megawatts. So solar, we can have ground mounted solar farms, rooftop solar, floating solar on lakes and things like that. So solar is not a problem. It's coming up in a big way. So these are details. Rooftop solar is catching up slowly. If you can have a three kilowatt solar panel, I think Professor Kumar is an expert. You can get any advice from him. If you have a three kilowatt solar roof, in your home will cost maybe 10 to 15 lakhs, I think. Uh, then there's a scheme, the CEB, Zero Electricity Board, uh, net metering, they have three schemes. So if you overproduce, they will pay you. Uh, otherwise, you have to pay a little uh, uh, bill at the end of the month. So this is called uh, Solar Roof Program by the CEB. But as I mentioned earlier, the country's plan and CB plan does not go together because CB has the problems that I mentioned earlier. So if you have to go for renewables, 70% by 2030, we should generate approximately 21,000 gigawatt hours energy from uh, these renewable sources. Right. Mm. A floating solar, first example, University of Jaffna, somewhere in a lake. Nearby, there were 42 kilowatt small floating solar park, floating on water. So it doesn't use any land. Mini hydro, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka has already tapped all possible major hydro, but mini hydro is possible. If you have one meter or a couple of meters high water head, you can, um, or small waterfalls, you can develop mini hydro. Biomass is uh, also developing. Uh, so these are the mm, resources we have. Uh, yeah, these are again statistics. Mm. So CB's issue problem, how to integrate these to the grid? You have to develop either pump storage or battery storage. Mm. No other option. These are the battery, huge battery in a container. These are, you can buy, these are commercially available. <clears throat> and we have a research project, by Dr. Atul Vijay Singh. He can make coin cells. What is inside these is a stack of coin cells. You can take motorcycle batteries, car batteries, or lorry batteries, or anything, and up to container size, mm, starting from these little building blocks. Right, mm, pump storage, we discussed. Uh, okay, this is a pump storage, upper reservoir like Victoria, and you have a, to have a lower reservoir. So when there's enough wind or enough sunshine during the daytime, you pump the water up. So these are hybrid systems, solar, wind, storage batteries, supercapacitors coming in a big way. Again, uh, Professor Kumar has a research project. Mm. And these are already developed and waiting for a commercial partner. And biofuel, Dr. Professor Renuka has a biofuel project, and we develop uh, our group, and Professor Jasundra Bandar, and Professor Kumar. Uh, these are research stage, and some are matured to be commercialized. Mm. Right. Uh, okay, now we come to uh, the time. Yeah. Uh, what about the transport sector? Electrical vehicles, EVs, coming in a big way. 
Okay, this is Sri Lanka's dream. Can we become a renewable energy island? You can see they have only solar panels, windmills, and maybe biodiesel plants, and storage batteries are underground. Ideal renewable energy model. No fossil fuel burning. Yeah, renewable energy community. Solar, wind, and other things. Hydro is there somewhere. Uh, Vietnam, uh, <clears throat> classic example, a huge growth in solar and other renewables compared to Sri Lanka, compared to any other Asian countries. Uh, there are a lot of private investors go and invest in Vietnam in the renewable energy projects. Hardly any come to Sri Lanka, as far as I know, due to various reasons. So Vietnam is attracting most of these international investors and they have, they have developed renewable energy in a massive way. <clears throat> Electric vehicles, back to global market, they predict. Electrical vehicle market is developing, growing at, at a rate of 21.7, say 22% mm -hmm. every year. It is expected to grow from 8.1 million units cars in 2022 in, in the world to 39 million by 2030. Electric cars. Exponential growth is expected. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, global battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids, you can see from 2020s is going up. So that's the future. By 2025, it's expected that in one out of five new cars sold worldwide will be electric. One out of five will be electric by next uh, during the next two years' time. By 2030, two out of five cars worldwide will be electric. Mm, so transport sector is also undergoing trans transition. Sorry. Another important point is, especially for Sri Lanka, that the future tourists will look for green destinations. Okay. Countries which does not burn fossil fuel, which develop renewable energy technologies. So uh, tourism will undergo similar change. This is a MANA 1000 megawatt uh, windmill, which was commissioned last year, ADB funded, 200 million dollars project. This is Sri Lanka's first ever agrivoltaic power plant, solar farm. Mm, this is by Haley's or somebody, I think, company. Solar in Sri Lanka is developed by the private sector, except this uh, solar, solar especially, yeah. Okay, Sri Lanka is there. Our dream renewable energy island is on the other side. Uh, so I think we all should be prepared for this kind of transition. Let's all contribute within our capacity to make Sri Lanka a uh, renewable energy island in Asia. Not only self sufficient but also can we export renewable energy? Uh, to nearby uh, our neighboring countries. Now, there's since I will spend five minutes. Okay, so far so good, so nice. Last uh, month, February, government, so the cabinet, gave the approval to set up two nuclear plants in Sri Lanka. Nuclear energy is not renewable because it consumes uranium. But it's green because it does not emit CO2. But nuclear is nowhere in the declarations signed by the presidents previously, nowhere in the CEB long term generation plans. Suddenly, during the last three, four weeks, uh, Russian team came, they are going to buy it from Russia. 
two nuclear plants, 55 megawatts each. So this is outside the national agenda. Mm. Nuclear plants problem is, as we all know, is a very, very risky power source. If something happens in an island nation, especially, we have no place to run even. <laughs> and a country which cannot manage even their waste disposal, how to manage nuclear waste? Nuclear waste is radioactive. Uh, so there's a plan to, and the nuclear plant construction will take at least eight, 10 years and terribly expensive. And nuclear uh, disaster accidents is a risk. And nuclear waste disposal is a problem. But uh, it's coming up. I mean, not in the agenda, but uh, okay, this nuclear. This is a nuclear reactor with uranium. Uh, if the core gets melted down, there'll be radiation leaking out. And uh, this nuclear radiation, okay, we already have recently um, Three Mile Island in USA in 79, Chernobyl in 86, Fukushima 2011. These are unexpected nuclear disasters. What's the problem if there are, if something happens, nuclear accident, whole environment will be Mm, affected by radioactivity. The air we breathe, water we drink, food we eat, animals, plants, everywhere, this radioactivity will be there. And there, is, there are long-term effects. They will last for uh, hundreds of years sometimes, and the future generations will be uh, affected, health risks. So it's a very, only developed technologies can handle, but even, some of the European countries, like Germany, completely uh, banned any more nuclear. Mm. So this is a decision as citizens we have to take, okay. A Russian ambassador proposing two new mini nuclear power plants, 55 megawatts each for Sri Lanka. Right, so those are the developments. Uh, we have a huge potential to develop Sri Lanka as a renewable energy island, huge potential. So people have to, the government has to set the um, background, get the investors to invest. Um, so why go for nuclear? And also I did a cost analysis. In the US, there's a uh, small uh, nuclear power plants being built. If you do a cost analysis today, um, less than that cost, you can have a solar panel system and a storage system. Safe power at a lesser cost. So these technologies are evolving, developing, especially now solar panels were quite expensive a few years back. Now it's affordable. Similarly, storage technologies are developing very rapidly. So, it would be much better to invest in the renewable energy technologies uh, in the long run, even cost-wise, and use solar, wind, and hydro as much as possible to develop our power sector in Sri Lanka. Thank you.